Hello, welcome to the Adam and Rob show. Yeah, we realised that uh, Ben, Ryan and Alan, people don't want them. Yeah, people don't want them. We did a poll. Uh, mm-hmm. It turns out 100% of people just want us. Just so. the two of us. So this is what you're getting. This is the D&D channel from now on. From now on. <laughs> the, two, the two people at the table who know how to play D&D. <laughs> oh, we should include Ben, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I suppose. Um, today we are going to be going through all the questions that you guys gave us over the last week and answering a few insights and tidbits about uh, the wor- our D&D game, the world. We're going to be we're going to be taking a very small selection of the nearly 600 questions that we got because we don't have all day. Oh, uh, there, there were more than that on YouTube, weren't there? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot there's a lot of questions. So thank you for your questions. Hopefully a lot of them are double ups and hopefully we can ramble the answers a little bit so that it kind of answers multiple at once. And if we don't get to your question today, hopefully we can do more of these in the future. It'll be significantly easier like we're currently in my home office at the moment, but very soon the tavern's going to be done and we'll be able to do this kind of stuff in the tavern well, that was the, that was one of the first questions that came in was like when what's the future look like for mm. us what's the ta- what, what's the dates on the tavern and such so spoiler alert for those of people who saw the next time on from the most recent episode and we were like there ain't no next time on for you a lot of people intuited they could see slightly behind us that we we're obviously in the office of our new studio so uh, the next session is filmed not in the tavern because it's not ready yet. It's filmed in the uh, our offices are ready. So we set up the table and well mm-hmm. set up a table, set up chairs, set up costumes behind us, made it look quite pretty. But we are still obviously in the office. Um, it's going to be a good ten to twelve episodes in the office. Yeah, mm. and then after that, uh, the next table session after that will be in the tavern for mm. sure. We're kind of like we're looking at like ninety percent. <laughs> I would say ninety percent. Ninety percent sure to, that the next one after that will be in the tavern. To, yeah, to genuinely, I genuinely think that the next one after that will be in the tavern. But I'm going to say ninety percent because and all of the like artist impressions that we're seeing and everything, all the designs of everything, it looks incredible. Mm. I'm very very excited for it. There's a there's a question further on. I might as well answer it right now someone had said um what are we doing for a new table Mm. and we literally just before recording this came out of a meeting about the new table yeah and we're getting to make the table of our dreams basically looks very good it's basically Mm. like a a trapezium kind of shape for the players so that they can be a little bit raked out for camera purposes uh it's long enough and wide enough for all of our purposes with all the maps and everything i've Mm -hmm. got my own dungeon master section behind it's a beautiful, beautiful looking table. Oh, it's going to be so good. And it'll be fitting in the theme of the Honeywood Tavern, which is going to be the theme of the tavern. So yeah. uh, if you if you donated to the Kickstarter, we're going to have some more info on that uh, for you guys in the BTS blog pretty soon. Let's get into the other question. Let's start getting into some questions picked at random. Let's go with, uh, will we see more of the character's Darkwood counterparts in the future upcoming story? Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, I've, I have intentions to that. use uh, the Darkwood setting quite a lot. You may have seen hints of that in the Stephanie Liam thing oh, that happened course. and the fact that there was some shady business happening in, the, in, in Liam's situation. Uh, obviously, when when they eventually get out of Ewelin and they can go back to Honeywood, uh, part of the quests will take them into Darkwood, and you'll get to explore that a little bit more. Cool. <clears throat> uh, if you could run into anyone from the Epic NPC Man world that you have not yet met, who would it be, and how would you like to come across them? I feel like that needs to be a question for me because mm. you know who we're going to come across. <laughs> I've got ideas. <laughs> I there's part of me that wants to meet um, just because it's funny and I like the character. Wants to meet uh, oh god, what's his the Alan's character where he's very Isaac. dull Isaac. I kind of want to meet Isaac. Isaac is currently Greg's backup character. Each of the characters, each of the players, mm. has a backup character for if their character dies before the character gets resurrected in the game. Um, they they have to go on a quest to resurrect them and stuff, but they've got like a stand-in character so that they're not just sitting there not doing anything for a while. Mm. And Isaac is is Greg's stand-in, so you might meet him as an NPC, and in which case I'll probably choose a different backup character for Greg. And I think I've said this <clears throat> at the table, but my backup character is Eugene, <laughs> which would be uh, Eugene as a fighter, which I just the reason I made <laughs> yeah. him a fighter was like I think that's <laughs> hilarious. What, what does he shout in that in that one episode uh, where you see him it, actually it, getting ready to fight? Uh, it, it has the F word in it. What right. is it? Um, yeah. oh, oh, I'll f- you up. <laughs> and then uh, and then we've got Alfie as the backup for uh, Ben's character and uh, and Balin of course for backup for, for Bud. Morning. There's a few there's, there's so a few, other, there's a few other NPCs that choose. you've seen in the in the skit series that you'll that you'll hopefully see in the uh, in the main campaign. The other way around is I I, I want to see um I want to see Jeff in NPC man. <laughs> in NPC man. Yeah, we need mm. to invent characters mm. in this one that come up in this in the skit series. If you could go back and redo any part of the campaign, what would it be? 
probably uh, for me it would be Scabatha this whole Scabatha thing there was pretty much an entire table session uh, where I just didn't I, I, I left it going like I didn't run that right I wasn't I, I was a little too harsh on them with the traps and things I was forgetting a bunch of the stuff that she could do I didn't get in the exposition that I wanted to get in during that scene and all that stuff Mind you, if you had done all the extra abilities she had, it would have made it even harder. Well, no, because well. it was like, yeah, it was meant to be more interesting of a dynamic fight rather than just like a slog fest. So yeah. I've been because because I've mentioned this before with the uh, Yaris Goldhorn thing, I gave him extra abilities as well that it, I didn't have to use because of the dynamics of the fight worked out mm. fine. So if I'd have used some of her other abilities, I wouldn't have used some of the like extra minions. And yeah. Things. <clears throat> Are you getting tired of playing these characters uh, and buy for a new campaign with fresh ones? Uh, yes and no. I, I love I love playing Baradun. He's really enjoyable to play. I know that Rowan quite enjoys Bodger. Mm. I haven't really spoken a bit about him, but the reason that Alan changed from Artificer to, uh, to, cleric. to Cleric is he wasn't enjoying it. Yeah, he wasn't enjoying it, so we worked together to switch it up, make him a Cleric, because he figured he'd enjoy that a little bit more. Yeah. Um, so I think they're all enjoying their characters. Uh, at the I think at the, those two two things don't have to be mutually exclusive. They're enjoying the characters and they're looking forward to playing fresh ones when when the yeah. time comes. We we were talking about this. Is that something we need to talk to you? I'm going to talk to you about it live right here. Right. <laughs> um, as we we do want to play a new campaign at some point, obviously, but there's a lot more story to tell in mm -hmm. this current one. Yeah. Yeah, definitely keen on that. Uh, definitely keen to, to start afresh like we did with the isolation games. Just new characters, mm. new nothing. And, and uh, I know there was, um, when we were first starting out this channel, there was a lot of debate between us all about like the drawing power of having original, uh, uh, um, unique characters that people know about or having the the Completely risk factor of going yeah. like, do people will will people buy into these new characters? Mm. And then I think, as we saw with the isolation games, it's like, yeah, people will buy in. Yeah. People will enjoy For these sure. characters. People love Zaza and all the rest of them. I I think <laughs> what's going to happen is the only D and D that the four of us play is that game, mm. um, and so it is hard to feel sometimes hard to feel inspired by it. Well, not it's not inspired by it. It does feel not fresh sometimes yeah. because of that. Whereas when we're in the studio and we're able to do one shots and that kind of stuff, yeah. and we are playing different characters, I think that'll help a lot. Yeah. Um, so I look forward that to that. That leads on to another question I saw a few times of like, what other content can we expect once we've got a tavern? Mm -hmm. One shots is definitely going to happen. Uh, I'm going to run a few one shots with people, not just with these guys, but with like guest stars and things as well. Uh, I really want you guys to each run a one shot as well. I know that there'll be some reluctance from some people, but, uh, uh, but I, I want to see. I Rowan's really DM. want to play in Rowan's Rowan's one shot just to <laughs> see what what he does with being a DM. Um, <clears throat> I think each of them uh, being a player in those would be fantastic just to see see how Alan runs a game, see how Ben runs a game. You know, my gut feeling is Rowan <laughs> would actually surprise you as a DM. Oh yeah, I reckon. Um, and then uh, other other content like we've got supplemental stuff that we've got in the works that, that we want to do stuff like that survey interview uh, series and the are we going to do a ton more of that ton more of those a ton more like the the um, uh, behind the screen stuff where I'm giving you snippets of how things could have gone differently mm. uh, yeah all all sorts of supplemental things we've got in, in the in the works for for when we've got the, the, the actual tavern to do it and we don't need to hire out a third party and place yeah that's a, not having to hire out a third party place having all our own cameras and sound and literally just being able to be like rob can you do today yeah, come yeah. in come record in. we've got a done. studio let's do it move uh, since we haven't seen the golden skull of raul in the campaign yet could that mean it's still inside raul's head and who is raul <laughs> D have I, I wonder if I've we've never, we've never talked about so, Raul, so, so I, I haven't included I, I him have, I have headcanon, well it's not even headcanon, we have canon for Raul. Um, in uh, the game, he uh, the, the Skycraft, the game that NPC Man's based on in all of our background lore, Raul is uh, in the third, fourth, third expansion I think it is, of the mm, game. Right. And he's the end boss of the third expansion. Right. And Across the beyond Schmarg and Rog, across the the campaign is literally called Across the Mountains. Um, across the mountains, there is uh, like a like a desert Egyptian type vibe zone, right? And he is a um, he is like a kind of old god almost, oh, okay. like an Egyptian style, right, like right, right, yeah. with magic powers type god. Yeah. And in the game, when you kill him, he you loot his skull. 
And you take his and, skull and, and it's already golden. And it's well, whether I don't know exactly. I don't know if it's like a if it's a Game of Thrones season one situation or if it's like a, <laughs> what it is. But yes, he's because a, the the situation with me. All I knew about Raul, I didn't know any of that. So uh, all I knew is from coming at it from a D and D perspective. There is a spell in the game, a necromancy spell, that requires as its material component to cast a gilded skull. All right. And so I had in mind, like, that as and when, here's some exclusives, you may be meeting uh, some necromancers at some point. Mm. Uh, and, I, and, and I was going to have one of them have it on them, uh, yeah. like when you kill them and loot them, because then they'll be like, oh, golden skull of roll, because it's actually an, an item that necromancers yeah. can use in D&D. Yeah, well, well, there you go. So we'll see, we'll see. I'll, I'll put it in the campaign somehow or other. And what I've said just now, by the way, may change from being canon in the future. We have a lot of things that we, we have an enormous law document, a lot of which is like hasn't been. It's canon inside our heads and canon until we need it to not be canon. Which is super useful for me as the dungeon master running a game in this world where the law keeps changing. It's like, for example, uh, Bone Caller, and because of Bone Caller, who we had an NPC man and. He was, I mean, I had a hood up in that, yeah. so you couldn't tell. But in my mind, when we shot that skit, he mm. was human. Right. But um, then we wanted to repurpose him as... <laughs> uh, am I about to give spoilers in... away? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. But we did repurposed his species. Yeah. <laughs> um, Never mind, I was about to do spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. <laughs> we, 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 filmed, we filmed the next 12 episodes we, yeah, or so. That's the thing. <laughs> We're not shown yet. We're always existing in this thing where we've, we're actually <laughs> very up to date at the moment, but sometimes we've, we've filmed 12 episodes, yeah. like recently just filmed 12. We also have like 8 to 10 in the bank, which were from the previous session, which are being edited at the moment. So there's yeah. a lot of content in our minds that, we, that hasn't, hit that hasn't actually yet. hit screens yet. Um, what city location are you hoping to explore after leaving the island? Um, for me, I'm, I'm hoping to use this first campaign with the established characters as a sort of a, a world tour of the, the things that have existed in the skits. So I'm hoping to eventually get you to Schmagenrog, uh, to get you to um, uh, all the different Wraith. cities, Wraith and Alderkeep. Alder Alderkeep's the one I was trying to think of. Uh, all the different cities, basically, and then, eventually, and then eventually in Gerdon with, you know, confronting Leothil and all the rest of it. Cool. Uh, so I'm hoping to visit pretty much everything, but how about you? Any particular city or location that you're really looking forward to? There's a couple of, and I don't know if this will necessarily happen, but like I'd almost want to see like the, um, I can't remember the name of the mountain now. Or like the Monks of High Hergspire. Like, where, like a where, Mountain of Holy Light. Or the or Mountain of Holy yeah. Light. Like little locations yeah. like that, which have only been fe featured in, in like the series once. Gets, yeah. But, you know, that they are on our little map. And yeah, they're on the map, and so basically yeah. whenever you travel from one place to another, you'll pass by some of these locations, and you can either stop in for an hour or whatever. Um, what moment in the campaign are you most fearful of finding out the consequences from? You know. <laughs> you f know. <laughs> um, no, I... Yeah, I genuinely am terrified of the consequences... The, it, it, the, what happened on the ship where uh, Leithel came up and I thought it was going to be like genuinely Adam as the player thought it was Leithel like the bad guy and I heard you say familiar familial re resemblance no I heard you say familiar familiar oh familiar and, resemblance and if I had heard familial it would have clicked familial. that it's a cousin or something right. but I heard familiar resemblance which in my mind as I was wrong, <laughs> And in my mind, as I was role playing, it meant that he had it's some me, he had some type I'm of alive. illusion or something on his face. <laughs> it's me, High Sorcerer Baradun, Lethal, from the Temple of Calibor. Yes, Le uh, Baradun Lethal. You must work with my second cousin, Belandra Lethal, then head of arcane research. Lethal. <laughs> I'm most excited for the consequence that comes from you giving your giving Greg's address to the carnies. <laughs> when you're like, hey, I won the Bucking Bronco that I definitely cheated at. You send that ring of resistance to this address. I'm actually looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> what moment in the campaign... You, oh, I just read that. If you could choose to do, redo one fight from the ones you had so far, what would it be and why? Uh, I guess get Scabbath for me. How yeah. about you? Any of the fights that have been like, oh, I didn't do very well, or like that was I mean, boring. Or... I think I've done well in every single oh. fight. Like the like the VR fight which I won. 
Actually, yeah, like I'm that, pretty sure. So like, I don't, so you, I don't you really want, need to redo it. I don't you want, want it already. Exactly. There's no um, fights I want to redo. Uh, most uh, actually, not only the Scabatha fight, but the most recent fight, i.e., one you haven't seen yet. Um, we ended off the latest table session having a, a combat scene, and there was not aircon in that in that studio yet. So so I was sweating cobs, and I was passing out from uh, exhaustion from standing up all day, and I just feel like I didn't do that that fight justice, but. We'll see when when it when it airs. <clears throat> uh, are the adventures your character lived through canon in the NPC Man universe? This is of great debate amongst us. Um, Rowan and I <clears throat> believe they're canon, and uh, I mean you hear it at the table sometimes. <laughs> Alan goes, "It's, it's not, not canon." canon. It's, it's not, not canon. And Rowan and I go, yeah, "That's canon." It's canon. Yeah, it's canon. It's definitely canon. <laughs> in my um, mind, it's all canon. Yeah, it's. It, it, we started off the, the the second channel being like, "Yeah, everything that's going to happen in this campaign is ca- canon." But then necessity makes you go, "Ah, oh, we need a skit for the next series, uh, the next ep- uh, season of uh, Pick NPC Man, where this needs to happen, and that means that the other stuff can't be canon." And, and yeah, it's loosey goosey. Ca- it's canon until it needs to not be canon. That's always my canon. answer. It's canon until it's not. Uh, now you've actually started and played your characters for over a year. How did that affect your view of the characters? So now that you've actually played as Baradun for so long, not just as like an actor, but as like you've started him out and thought about his progression and how he became and all his backstory and everything, has it changed your idea of who he is and um, your view of it's him? It's not changed my idea of who he is, but whenever, as Adam, I've, I consider myself a very nice person, <laughs> um, whenever Ben says at the table, which he's said a few times now, I don't think Baradun deserves to be High Sorcerer, <laughs> and it maybe Laethel is better. Adam goes, fuck, you're right. And then I have to get back into role-playing Baradun and try and <laughs> defend like, that no, position. No. Yeah. Um, so I guess I've realised that, yeah, Baradun is a much bigger piece of shit. I mean, he's a piece of shit in, in an NPC <laughs> man, but he's an even bigger piece of shit. And trying to reconcile that and give him a satisfying character arc so that people still de- root for him. Yeah, yeah is that's a challenge. It really. I is. think. I think it's also shown people, everybody playing at the table. It's shown them that like what it takes to make an interesting D and D character. Because time and time again, we get asked like, "Oh, is the next character going to be Balin, or is it going to be the Muggers?" And it's going to be like, "No, these wouldn't make interesting. They'd, they'd stand up for like a session at most." And then they'd just be. You, you really want to play D and D with a guy who can only say morning, nice yeah. day for fishing, ain't it? It's, it's, it's going to get old real fast and so playing these characters for so long has, has really highlighted like when it's interesting and when it's not to play like a two-dimensional character one thing i've found and i'm going to really stress this for the girls campaign when they pick their characters is there's two things i think a good there's obviously lots of things a good dnd character needs but two things i think a good one needs one is flaws like like oh, yeah. like cr- proper critical character flaws not like you know, just some like, oh, he's... I uh, don't like gluten. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, bone calls thing of, like, I'm scared of undead is, like, that's a bit of a meh thing. Like, yeah. they, they need genuine character flaws. And one of the reasons our campaign works so well is all four of us are incredibly flawed. <laughs> and, like, pr- as I say, proper character flaws. Yeah. Um, and then the second thing is each character needs their own goal separate to mm-hmm. the campaign goal. Yeah. Um, and uh, I think that's what makes an interesting character. That for for the very few times that I have done D and D outside of our campaign, I can always see the weaker characters are the ones that are not flawed and don't have a goal outside yeah. of outside of the mission. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, we've seen a lot of everyone's backstory except for Greg. Will we ever get to see a leg of the journey focused on something from his past? Uh, <laughs> Yes and no. So when we were starting out, I asked people about their backstories, about their families, about how much they want to explore about those characters in the game. Uh, Alan told me pretty unequivocally, like, he's not that interested in fleshing out Greg because the whole point of the series, it's literally called Epic NPC Man. Man. It's kind of like the the, uh, silent protagonist in video games and things where it's like, the less you put onto that character, the more people can put Mm. themselves into it. And Greg kind of... Alan wanted him to to stay as that, so we don't. We're not going to flesh out like his his family and such. We're not going to flesh out his back his, his background or his his, his, his history. whole thing. Is he's is not that. There's another reason why Balin wouldn't be a good character to play. Is he's a NPC that walks in a circle. Yeah, exactly. Right. So so Greg, we are going to have a leg of the journey that is Greg's arc essentially, but it's but it's going to be in Honeywood. It's going to be about his quests and the people he knows, um, rather than like his backstory or his history or anything like that. Yeah. 
Uh, what race and class would you like to play next? It's a tough one. I, um, for the uh, one shot, charity one shot that I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, I um, really struggled to pick what uh, other I wanted to play. Mm. I, I, I always say that I want to play a fighter or a barbarian so I can just go in and smash things. <laughs> But then you played that for a one shot for a charity thing on uh, uh, Jasper's game day. Yeah, we did a yeah. twelve hour campaign f- uh, on my Twitch channel, and um, and you played a champion fighter. Mm. It was just like big tanky guy, and you were like, "Can I have amnesia so I don't need to even know what I was doing before this?" And all I do is smash. Just things. came in and smashed some stuff up, and was it fun? It was fun. It's <laughs> it was good. Fun. There's a lot of different I, ways to play D and D, and you can you can mix it up a lot. For for what I'm like, I think that while I loved it for a one shot and I would like to probably do it again for another one shot I would get um, bored long term doing, pl- doing smash just and smash smash that's smash it, yeah. whereas what I like which I think Rowan has found with Bodger sometimes like he's found like you can tell that he, he's like if we're not doing something that's combat or fighting it, it can get like well my character's designed around that so what else mm-hmm. can I offer to yeah. Me? yeah but whereas I what I like about Baradun and what I really enjoyed about Bonecaller actually in the most recent one shot is um, spells give you a um, a problem solving tool mm-hmm. and a storytelling tool as well actually that's so much richer than a sword or a hammer yeah like like the amount of times I've used my spells to solve problems already in the campaign um, like. Uh, Use of major image to um, uh, to yeah. like uh, ride the Gives buck and bronco. In, ingenious or, ideas and ways around things and stuff. Or Just the those... or the um, the what I oh, no that's coming. It's coming, <laughs> it's up. coming up. The, the, I feel in the next session there was a lot of other creative problem solving to do with spells as yeah. well. Yeah, that's why some of my favorites to play are usually wizards and stuff. I'm playing a wizard at the moment in a Dragonlance campaign. And just last night, there was a dragon flying over the town and somebody was riding it, shooting like explosive bolts out of a crossbow. And so I held my action to cast Catapult, which is a thing where you can fling an object uh, mm. in, a, in a line. And I waited until she shot the arrow because it specifically says you can target an object that's not being worn or carried. Mm. So as soon as it's fired out, it's no longer being worn or carried. As soon as and it fired, can... I went and fling it back at her. It exploded and blew her off the back of this dragon. Whereas like, you can't do that with a sword. can't do that with a sword. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that's kind of like that's a not answering the question at all. Actually, yeah. So what <laughs> that's why I like, like my play? current class. <laughs> I, maybe I'd like to play monk or something. I think monk would be quite fun. I reckon you'd be pretty good at uh, artificer as well because you Possibly. put in you put in the work to think ahead of time about like what can I do. What, what I guess what that's are the probably the problem solving thing there yeah. as well. Be fun. <clears throat> uh, any commitments for players in the girls campaign? You mean well, who we're getting? Yeah. I what assume? Commitments for players. Um, do we? Are we uh, announcing anything? No. <laughs> We're not announcing anything. No, no announcements. No. Uh, I'll tell you, they'll all be women. Yeah. Female identifying. You can guess. <laughs> you can guess. Uh, when is D&D merch coming out? Probably our next merch drop, actually. We're talking about it on Monday. What sort of merch are we thinking? Um, we don't know yet. I would love to <laughs> I would love to put together a DM screen that people can get, That's like the idea. one that I use with the artwork. Yeah from the uh, fan mm. and the, the stuff on the inside that's like my choices of what, what is important to me in my games mm. and that'd be a cool one uh, we've got there's so many things you can make with the indie merch we could have VLDL dice we could dice. have minis yeah. we could have all sorts of stuff do all of our all of our characters as, yeah um, as old Baroness playables playable uh, characters so that you can then run the campaign Oh, yeah. speak, speaking of which, that was another thing that was asked a couple of times, like turning this into a module, like yeah, so people can do that'll it. That'll definitely happen that one day. That is an incredible amount of work. Yeah. For the people who've asked for that on a whim to just be like, why don't you write it as a Write module? a book. Just write a book. <laughs> I do intend to do it one day. I would love to do it. I've got a, like 108 pages of document at the moment with all of this on it so far. It's all just in a Word document. Um, so oh, I've got... And I've also, technically, it's something like forty-six thousand words or something. As, so a, as a module, would you need to wait until the campaign's finished before you can? Probably yes. It would more likely be a campaign setting than a module. The difference being that it wouldn't have a story that you that like you follow. You follow. It's just like here's here's some of the things going on in Gerdon. I'd put like little plot hooks and like side quests and mm. stuff. Here's some things you could do in Gerdon if you want to set it in Honeywood. Here's some things around Honeywood. Here's some NPCs you can meet and all yeah. that stuff. So I'd probably do something like that first. Uh, I do have intentions of doing that one day, but it'll take a long time. Stuff is broken. Ben's Ben's sword's broken as well in his uh, bloody bob, so I need to fix that. Sadness. Uh, Any plans for one, three shots to go along with the two campaigns? Similarly, uh, any more survey stuff? Yeah, we kind of talked about that before. All all kinds of supplemental things coming for the D&D channel. 
watch this space. Will you or your characters make guest appearances at the female table? I'm sure, yeah. I'm hope uh, they're, they're going to be in the same world. It's going to be like a, a cinematic universe style. We've got all these different stories that are always going to take place in the same world. And so there's always going to be, if the girls go to a place that the guys have been to uh, after the fact, then there'll be hints of the fact that they've been there. There'll be traumatized NPCs crying and things about it. Um, there'll be wanted posters for these guys about because they've done something terrible uh, and vice versa if these guys go to a place that the girls had previously been to then they'll see evidence mm. of that and then every so often maybe they'll uh, they'll, they'll cross over and we'll get a, a couple of guest stars to, to jump on from one table to the next the possibilities are endless mm. when we've got our own tavern I was I was thinking I, I said this to Rob the other day that it's almost like I want to do some type of some type of it's almost like a third series or maybe every like month we have this thing where Baradun and then one of whoever like seems like the natural leader of the girls group <laughs> or a magic user of the girls group yep. go into the ethereal plane together and have like a debrief and a catch up like, hey, how's, like, how's things going on your, yeah. on your quest yeah yeah and it could just be a fun kind of fun little like what's the yeah a debrief slash catch up slash almost like, like a talking recap. head almost thing, like a yeah. recap it's, as well the, the um the like, difficulty... oh yeah today today Bodger jumped off oh sorry in the last week Bodger jumped, <laughs> jumped off an away. airship yeah. and had to have an arrow cocker catch him and we'll it was like, f- stressful no way Becky did that yeah, yeah. um the, the difficult thing for me will be that the girls will be starting at level one and these guys are level 10-ish and so like there's going to be a, a, a level uh, discrepancy that I need to work on first before before I cross them over too much because mm. because uh, I've, I know from experience if you cross over your various parties that you play with one of the first things they want to do is test that they're a better party than the other party by having <laughs> a PvP with them so we've got to make we sure that keep, tra- keep on top of that um, are you guys still enjoying and having fun with what you're doing? in this busy lifestyle is this still an enjoyable it is very enjoyable for me it's um i genuinely had a freaking awesome time in the last filming sesh we did um because we were in the studio yeah, and because it was, it was kind of new, new space and everything um there was a lot of uh, a lot of other kind of D play for that session as well like i don't want to give anything away but we weren't so combat heavy this last session we there was really lots, of, there was was lots of puzzles puzzles and rp and and like moral dilemmas and things so but I'm not going to lie, we are so incredibly busy at the moment. It is a little bit difficult to focus on everything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so hopefully once we're settled in the studio and we've got into our new filming schedule and we're able to film in the tavern more, um, in this, as the question says, in this busy life, <laughs> we'll have more fun doing it. But yeah. the last session was very good. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. The the other guys say that they're enjoying it as well. I talk to them uh, between sessions. Like, I try and do a catch-up with, with everybody before and the next session to be like, hey, is there anything that we can change? Is there any way that we're doing this that you want to do differently? Everybody seems to enjoy themselves. Mm. Uh, even Ben, who rolls like garbage, <laughs> <laughs> says he's uh, still very much enjoying it. Um, <laughs> we've got a question here from a Law Quinn. Don't know who that is. No, she says, what do you guys have against talking one at a time? Well, we all did personality tests yesterday, and it turns out we all have the commun- exact same communication style. And that style includes needing to get your opinion out. I don't out know what you're talking about, really, to be honest, because <laughs> actually, what it really no, is, we, is I don't our think, communication I don't style is where we any reason need to be for her the to one ask saying all, something. Because nobody said. <laughs> <laughs> Good go. luck Subtitle subtitling that, that Lachlan. <laughs> if you guys don't know, Lachlan is the person who does the subtitles. And if you're not watching this series with subtitles, you're missing you're out. You're missing out greatly. They are, they're very funny. Um, How long have we been recording for? Uh, we'll probably do another couple. Another couple. Uh, let's choose some at random. Um, let's go with... Uh, if the campaign ended with Baradun and the Dickheads meeting oh, their demise... That. Would you be happy with that? Like if I, if if I TPK'd a, you? If it was a satisfying ending, yeah. <laughs> satisfying, yes. So. Um, the way that I tend to make my stories is that I'll take the... Uh, like, the entire story is based around these particular characters. So if if I'd set up all of this stuff with Leothil and now Kelethak and stuff, and then Baradun died permanently, I'd be going, well, that f- well I, that's my... It's kind of ruined that, the story. Uh, that was... Who's... What, Eugene doesn't have the same tie into no. Leothil and Godon and stuff. No. Which is why we've kind of lent into the fact that this is a video game and we haven't had to utilize it yet, but there is a respawn mechanic into it. So I would not personally be satisfied if all of the characters just met their demise. The story probably wouldn't end there. Um, if it ended like when you're level 20 and you're fighting Leothil or whoever's the and, and, and bad guy, Kaelthak, whoever it happens to be, 
no spoilers, um, whoever the end bad guy happens to be, and you all meet your demise in the final battle, maybe that's a satisfying ending. Maybe it's just like yeah. a, a tragedy ending yeah. where he just dies. Um, but any time before if, that... If we TPK'd is... in the next session, I think it would then be fine to be like, it's a session of four completely unrelated, yeah. g- Eugene, Balin, yeah, yeah. Uh, Isaac, Isaac, and, and Alfie. Alfie. And it's f- whatever the story is, they've got together to re resurrect the heroes of the land. Yes. The heroes yeah. of the fun. Heroes. heroes. Yeah. Of the, the, land. The, the ones that are destined, anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we've got this sort of game, gamified resurrection mechanic. It doesn't mean that uh, death doesn't have any consequences for you to <laughs> keep in mind as well. I've definitely put a lot of consequences for them dying. It's not, it's not a cheap thing to get them back. Um, and and it also, sort of requires I think, side quests and stuff. But ultimately, I want to continue going with the story that we've been telling the whole time and tell it to, all course. the way to a satisfying conclusion. And as gamers, I mean, we know that death is not permanent in, in a game. <coughs> yeah, exactly. And, right. But when you're playing a game, you don't want to die, right? Like, no. So it's still there are still stakes there for us. Uh, let's pick something from Future Plans. Um, with the... Uh, let's see. With the new tavern set, uh, what new gaming accessories are you most hoping for or looking forward to having? Any interface, tokens, maps? Well, I mean, I guess it's probably pretty nerdy of me, but I'm actually... All the behind-the-scenes stuff is what I'm looking forward to. The cameras, <laughs> the sound gear, the lighting gear, all that yeah, jazz. It's going to just... It's going to... For me, it's the set itself. Like, it's going to be so good to be in an immersive kind of feeling like we're actually in a tavern. Mm. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, let's see. Which Rob NPC is your favourite Rob NPC of all the Rob NPCs? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. God damn it. I loved um, Dirk. He was great. <laughs> Dirk. Um, yes, Dirk was great because he, so, he was so helpful and yeah. kind and like, loving. Lovely. And Come on in. I'll give you food and clothing. Complete strangers. D- oh, if you wouldn't mind, just not... The one thing I'll ask is just don't touch that cu- that <laughs> locket. No, that's a very special oh, locket no. to oh, me. No. Please don't. <laughs> please, please don't. Do you, do you know what the funny thing is? Is the... the funniest NPC well, not necessarily the funniest but the one that gives me the most giggles is actually your very first NPC in episode one is the guy riding <laughs> the guy riding the cart that Ben s- steals from just some random farmer block and, and, and you're, you're going he's, he's going you can't see me steal from nope, you no no he's great because he rolled a 20 or whatever I can't yeah, remember he's real sh- no he rolled poorly on stealth but then I had him roll intimidation or something so he's yeah. like intimidated into being like you can't see me I just I, can't remember. I don't know something why like that. that just really and tickles he's me like what's this he's like, oh, that's me <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. I uh, I did include him in the things to things to bring back part of the oh, document. Yeah. So I've got like usually when stuff is mentioned, I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll bring b- reference to that later. Um, and he's in there as a as a character to bring back when you finally get back into Honeywood. Has anyone gotten that damn fly yet? Um, well, oh, funny you should mention. Oh, no. We you did get that damned fly. Uh, because uh, a fan made us a a, a wonderful um, magical item. A magic item. Was I think I've ago. seen. Yeah, I've seen it since I got here. It was literally him <laughs> moments ago. I have no idea. Obi's where taking it. Um, we, a, a fan made us a fly swat, uh, made out of dragon scales and wrapped leather, and it came with like a, uh, a wood burned stat block that gave us like a, a bonus to hitting I- insectoid creatures. There's actually an, a fly right here in the room. That's ironic. Let's kill it. Um, here we go. He found it. I did. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful yeah. work. Uh, dragon scale, and and so we. There you go. Test it. You got a plus one, <laughs> plus a plus one to hitting all of your doc, your uh, monitors. <laughs> Didn't Not get sure it. if you got it. Um, it says you have to fail like six <laughs> times in a row or something, yeah. and then you get an automatic hit. It's very funny. All right, so have there we go. Got, have we got time for one more? Let's go one more. One more. All right. Uh, I saw one before that I like to. I think it'll be a good one to end on. Um, is Bartholomew Osiris Bladesong an NPC or a PC? Okay, so... Actually, I don't know if we do have time because I've got to get to that thing. Oh, so. fuck. Actually, what is it? Oh, God, yeah. it's 2 o'clock. So we I do need we to... I think there. we'll actually probably just um, pick that one back up next time we do yeah. one of these videos. Yeah. yeah, definitely get to that one another time. <laughs> so um, thank you very much, everyone, for coming along and watching in our mid-weeks between uh, the campaign. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed the bloopers last week. We got to see them j- just it's now, f- actually, f- when, when we're recording, and they're very, very funny. funny. So um, we will be back in the studio with game content next week so look forward to that thanks very much bye